Hello, Capricorn, and welcome to your tarot card reading for June 2024. It is a fantastic big month, everyone. June is huge. We have Jupiter now in Gemini. We have the sun through there. We've got Venus. We've got Mercury racing through. We're gonna have the activation of Cancer later on. We've got Mars in Taurus. So there's going to be a lot of activity that goes on. It's gonna be a fantastic month to really see progress, to see developments, to see and feel that true sense of hope that these manifestations, that this lifestyle that you are hoping to cultivate is actually and truly possible for you. So I think generally speaking, there are gonna be a lot of really wonderful things that happen for the most part. Um, and there's going to be this new sense of revival that kind of rushes through everything. So I think it's gonna be a fantastic month. So as you're watching these tarot card readings, you are free to watch for either your sun, moon, or rising sign. However, when I do reference transits, probably you know, the rising sign is going to be the most accurate in terms of house placement. So just keep that in mind. Um, another really quick little thing, um, I'm going to be starting to post really short dailies on YouTube. I've already been posting them on Instagram and TikTok, and I just really wanted to incorporate these on YouTube as well. One to two minute daily astrology, daily tarot card pulls. So if you really want to make sure that you hit those, um, please make sure to subscribe, hit the little bell so you get the notification every time those get posted. Um, those will probably get started June 1st. Okay. So just FYI on that. Also the comprehensive readings, we go really, really in deep in these comprehensive readings every month. We get a whole second reading. So if you want to join for that, you are more than welcome. All the information on how to access those are going to be found on the pinned comment down below. I'll pin a comment there and you can also find it in the description box too. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much. I love you. Have a great month and I'll talk to you soon. Hello Capricorn, welcome to your June reading. So we're gonna start with an animal spirit card today. So let's see what comes through. What comes through? It says, do a walking meditation each day for the next week. Okay, that's kind of a really <laughs> straightforward card. It's very instructive. And you know, honestly, with all this Gemini energy being activated, right, we've got Gemini season underway. We have Venus in there. Jupiter is in there as of May 25th. Um, we have Mercury speeding through Gemini. So this is all sixth house energy. So I have a feeling Capricorn is going to be very busy. Okay, there's going to be a lot of things going on, a lot of activity. Gemini just by itself is highly active. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting that you guys are always so active. You've got Gemini in the sixth house, which is all about your projects and your day-to-day -day life and all kind of like the more mundane habit aspects of life. And here it is saying like, just do a walking meditation. I think you're going to need to unplug quite a bit. I think you're going to need to kind of pull away and decompress and process and really think about a lot of things. And you might really need that walking meditation a lot. Now, if it's not walking, you know, whatever you need to do, um, if you just want to sit outside on your porch with your cup of coffee or tea or uh, read, I don't even want to say read your books. I don't want you to like consume. I think it's really important to just be with yourself be with nature, be with your pets or your children, right? Just be really present in calm. If it's children, like calm, okay? <laughs> like make sure it's it's kind of a, a nice relaxing type of environment. Because I think you're going to need that. I think you're going to need your out of the box minutes. You're going to need that time. So what does the moon card or the moon deck have to say for Capricorn? patience. Okay. I, you know, I do, I think there's going to be a lot of like whirlwind kind of energy for Capricorn. Like your projects are going to just whoosh kind of go and your things at work are going to go and, you know, and when you deal with other people, especially, yeah, you are going to have to exhibit some patience. You are going to have to, you know, really think about having forgiveness and compassion toward other people and, the, you know, because I know Capricorn does like to have a lot of control over things. And sometimes other people don't care as much as you care. And you know, there's always these strange dynamics going on. And having patience with yourself, having patience with other people, especially, you know, really recognizing other people's humanness. Now that doesn't excuse bad behavior or excuse, you know, people not doing what they say they're going to do or fulfilling their role. But you know, 
we're all human, we're all really doing our best, and we're all really feeling the effects of this Gemini energy. And please keep, did I say this already? I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself now. I can't remember if I said it. But right, we got the sun in Gemini, we got Venus in there, Mercury is going to be speeding in there. And the big one really is Jupiter, right? Jupiter coming into the sixth house as of May 25th, huge transit for the year. And you know, this is going to be something that's just really powerful, really potent, and it's activating all of that day-to-day -day type of stuff for you in the sixth house, okay? So there's just going to be a lot going on. So let's see what's coming through with the tarot cards for Capricorn for June 2024. Capricorn, June 2024. Well, Capricorn card, first and foremost with temperance, temperance with patience, yes, and nine of coins. Okay, so first of all, things are looking up in terms of improvements that you're wanting to make. I often say my nine of coins is like my phoenix rising from the ashes card. So, you know, there are things that are gonna, gonna start moving in the upwards direction. Okay. They're going to start growing. They're going to start developing, start evolving, all of that. And I do see you being quite successful with the things that you are putting your time and energy into. So, you know, I think that's maybe some reassurance or some validation that you're on the right track, that you are making the right decisions. You know, hopefully that can offer some, some reassurance for many of you. And yet I do know how hard it can be. Like I, I have no doubt that Capricorn is going to be in quite a laborious place, right? I think you're going to have a lot of work to do. I think there are a lot of, you know, things that must be done in order to accomplish the goal. And I think you're kind of just starting to really see like, okay, things are starting to move up now and that's good, but we got to keep pushing. We got to keep evolving. We have to keep putting more investment into it, investing in ourselves, investing in our talents and our skills and continue to leverage those things in such a way that we can continue to grow. Okay. So the devil is the discipline and the commitment. And I think there is a little bit of pride that comes out with the devil. I mean, but it's sometimes pride, <laughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, sometimes pride can be a good thing because it's like, well, I want to do this because it's who I genuinely believe that I am. And I think the ego is creeping in a little bit, but weirdly it feels aligned with the soul. And I don't know that we say that often enough. The ego and the soul can be aligned sometimes. <laughs> They're not always in opposition, <laughs> in spite of what we may think. But I do think there's a substantial alignment happening, and I think it's really beautiful. And when you are aligned like that, that's when real magic happens. But again, the, the, there is kind of a humility, too, of like, okay, this is going to be a lot. And some Capricorns are going to shrink with just this, and they're never going to actualize the nine of coins ever, right? Because this gets too hard and they are going to quit and they're going to run away and they're going to say, well, maybe that's really not for me, even though it is, and they know it is, but they're going to think it's not because it's challenging them a little too much, a little too hard. And I just don't think that the Capricorns here on this video watching that want that to happen. <laughs> so, you know, but again, even with temperance, I don't think there's a lot of stress. Like here with the devil card, there's a lot, but you don't have to be stressed about it and you don't have to have anxiety and you don't have to be nervous or whatever about it. I think that if you do feel those types of feelings, the way you label them and the way you identify them is really, really important, right? If you're feeling anxious and you're feeling stressed, maybe it's just your body saying there's a lot of energy here. And instead of letting the energy be labeled as anxiety or stress, say, well, maybe I can channel that energy. If it's just energy, let me move it toward something practical. And I think being practical with all this sixth house energy and being productive and being effective and efficient is something that's just, is just what's happening. I don't even know that you need to do anything about it. It's just what's happening with the sixth house activation. Okay, so it's just going to get channeled as long as you're aware of it and as long as you don't label it inappropriately. Okay, uh, so I'm kind of sensing like this progression of like, hey, there's a lot, but it's okay because I'm going to be successful. 
<laughs> so, but again, even still patience, that devil card, because sometimes we can get oh, really frustrated and that's when we can micromanage things and we can really try to exert a lot of force into things. You know, if we're trying to exert force into things that really just don't want to be forced, go take a walk, right? Like that's, that's when the ego and the soul kind of go head to head a little bit because then your ego is like, ah, but I want it to be the way I want it to be. And it can get angry and then it can, again, go in that negative direction. So I think it's really important for you to understand how alchemical and how artistic that temperance card actually is. This is art. Okay, this is true art. Like when you feel that control, micromanaging, oh my gosh, I hate that this is going on. Oh my gosh. And then saying, okay, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to alchemize this. I'm going to transmute this into something more productive and redirect and kind of go in that other direction. Okay. I think that's going to be a critical thing for Capricorn. So daily walk, daily walk. Okay. What else? Oh, we got three. Okay, beautiful. Loving the two of cups in the middle um, because it really speaks to your alliances and it speaks to your communication and it speaks to collaborating. And with Gemini now being active, there's a social element here with Jupiter, a very social planet coming into a kind of a more social sign. This is a good thing, okay? For the past couple of months, I really say it's like March, April, and May, um, I've been talking about how independent and self-reliant and so much on your own shoulders and it's Aries and Taurus, right? What can we say? But when we move into Gemini, we have to start really opening ourselves up to other people, other people's ideas, other people's creativity, other people's resources, other people's, um, and what they offer, right? Their value, because there's so much value in what they have. And that value can help us and our value can help them. And there's this beautiful exchange that happens. And Mercury, the planet of exchange, is moving through Gemini in rulership. It's moving very quickly. So these exchanges that occur can be highly valuable for everyone involved. There's no retrograde. Mercury is strong. Okay, so I mean, I feel like there could be so much benefit to just talking to people, connecting with people, working with people, hiring people meeting people, dating people, okay? It's really all about people now. And we want to get involved with others um, in terms of what they have. And it doesn't have to be always face-to-face, -face, you know, a lot of us are online and that's fine. But, you know, there, there comes a time when we need to acknowledge that, you know, maybe other people's ideas, other people's um, energy, other people's souls, has something of so much value and so much benefit that it can help both of us. Okay, this is really a mutual benefit here. And I see that there is definitely some kind of a unification. We've got two cups coming up here, two cups here, you know, and with the star card, there really is this sense of direction and belonging as well. There's, there's, this is like an Aquarius energy. So there's, you know, community, friends, that kind of thing also involved with the star. But it is about belonging, but it doesn't mean you give yourself up for something bigger than yourself. There's still a lot of personal identity going on, um, but it really is about shining bright for the world to see. And what better way to do that than to surround yourself with people who lift you up. And really being around people who lift you up is super, super important, you know? And with the Fool card, there's a big leap of faith that I think you're going to need to make at some point throughout June, that there's something big going on. There's something a little scary. We kind of got to kind of come back to that devil card consistently and say there's, there's always going to be a little bit of a fight when that devil comes out. There's always going to be a little bit of a, a resistance that happens. So you might be resisting this fool card a little bit, but I don't see it being so resistant that you don't jump off this cliff. I think you do. I think you will because the nine of coins is here and the temperate. I, I'm really happy this temperance card came out because it does indicate a redirection to me. Like that's the word that's coming to my mind right now. It's a redirection. So you're redirecting yourself toward things that you know are in your best interest, which is the two of cups. 
your collaborations, I think, is kind of a, a safety net or a safe haven that when you are in that two of cups place, you feel that you are in the right place. You feel that you are in the right people with, with the right people, excuse me. Okay. I think that's important too. There's trust, I think, with the two of cups too. Um, you trust these people. Maybe you've worked with them before. Maybe you've known them for a while. So you're not wasting time and wasting energy wondering if you can trust them or wondering if they're going to be loyal or wondering, you know, anything like that. I think you know that that's what's going to be, the, that that's the case. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of hope and healing with that star as well, that this is going to be a hopeful and healing experience and something maybe that Capricorn just really needs, right? That you just really need to move on. And I'm not saying you're really stuck in the past because I don't feel like Capricorn is stuck in the past. I don't think really a lot of people, I mean, people who are doing the work. I don't think a lot of people who are doing the work are caught in the past. I think people who are doing the work are genuinely embracing this future. Because I think Jupiter and Gemini, it's just, it's not a stuck placement. This is not a place for us to be so grounded and rooted and like kind of anchored to our traumas and all of that. This, this is a very liberating transit, Jupiter and Gemini. And I think you're going to feel that significantly. And like the, the, now the devil does have that heaviness to it, you know? And so I feel like there's going to be a shedding from that as the devil is right on top of the star and that that's a part of the healing that the star offers and that there's going to be a lot of wisdom that gets extracted from these past experiences. And you're going to finally really understand, uh, why certain things had to happen and what lesson you really needed to learn. Because sometimes, it's like the more and more time goes on past a certain event or past a certain experience, sometimes when we're really close to it, we're like, okay, well, that's what I was supposed to learn. I was supposed to learn this, 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 and this. And then years go by and then you look back again, you're like, oh, like I learned like so many more things than I ever realized from that experience. <laughs> like you don't even realize sometimes how much you learn from things. And I think this is going to be one of those moments where you start to really, really absorb the wisdom. And, you know, wisdom is something that you can really implement moving forward. And it makes your life better. So a lot of healing, a lot of forgiveness and a lot of compassion for things that happened. One of the most liberating experiences you could potentially have. Okay, beautiful. The moon. The thing I like about the fool with the moon card is that the fool does have a naivete to it, but it's a good kind because it's like we we kind of need that in order to get us to jump off that cliff. But I think the fool is also really okay with the not knowing of things with that moon card. It's like, yeah, I'm jumping off this cliff and I have a lot of questions and I have a lot of things that are unanswered and I really don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but that's okay, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> And I, I like that. I like that you're just going to kind of do it anyway, because I think that's what life is really demanding of Capricorn right now. Let's just do it anyway. And I think you generally have a pretty risky personality for the most part. I think Capricorn being a cardinal sign, you know, you, you are okay with jumping in without, I mean, there is some, some semblance of control that you would like to have, I'm sure. But when it really comes to big life decisions, you're like, well, the only way to know is if we do it. So let's do it, right? That's the cardinal quality that you guys have and the ambitious quality of Saturn rulership. Um, because you're just not afraid because you know that you'll work hard. You know you'll show up for yourself. The, but the moon does bring stuff up, you know, and... It comes back to the devil again. It comes back to the doubt. It comes back to the fear, comes back to the trauma, comes back to the, the things. But there's such a stark contrast between what's going on here. This is probably going to be through like the first and second weeks 
of Gemini season, like first and second weeks of June, moving into the third week of June. And then as we move in through the last week of June, moving into cancer season, that's going to be the season opposite of you. Um, then we're going to start to feel that moon energy. And this is probably going to be a time when the confidence kind of just sort of subsides a little bit. Maybe there's a lot of confidence here because there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of stuff happening. You'll see a lot of progress. Uh, maybe you do make this big decision, right? We'll see what the clarifiers have to say. But, you know, with the moon, it's like, okay, then, then things kind of get kind of real. Because there's this big whirlwind of energy and then you're like, oh, okay, well, now we, now we have momentum and again, things get real. Okay, now we got to really do something with this. Now we got to really commit. And now we got to really put our backs into it. We got to roll up our sleeves, get our hands in the dirt, and we got to really go for it. And while all this is lovely and great and social, and you're meeting all these wonderful people and da 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 da, and that's great, but now it's like, it's go time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now it's go time. Now you've got all the ingredients, it's time to bake the cake. Okay. And some people are going to stare at that table full of ingredients and be like, this is hard. I don't know what to do. This is scary. I don't know what to do. What if I fail? What if it's not perfect? And with all that sixth house energy, right, there's Jupiter in the sixth house. I think there's going to be a demand for perfection a little bit, you know, and a demand to do it the absolute best. And sometimes that can be debilitating. But I also think that is what pushes you even more with the eight of wands, because even from that moon card, even from the big question marks and all the stuff, you're still propelling forward. Really, the page of coins is like a day by day. And I don't think you have a choice. That's just sixth house. You just have to wake up tomorrow and do the things and then go to bed and then wake up the next day and do it again. That's all it is. It's really not that hard. It's just a matter of doing it. And of course, the commitment of doing it and um, maintaining that sense of self-love and that sense of self-respect and showing up fully as much as you can. And the page of coins is also very humble because I always say he's like my apprentice. It's like he's doing an apprenticeship, learning from a master. It just so happens that your higher self is your master right now. Your higher self is the master craft, the master alchemist here. And it's teaching you and it's it's teaching you and it's guiding you as you move forward day to day. Sorry, I'm just hearing some weird noises in my house. <laughs> just never heard that sound before. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the mass, like the student, you are learning from yourself, your high, the higher master self, but it really is done in a day to day type of way. It's done in a humble way. And it's done with that attitude of I've got a lot to learn. And with the fool card, remember the fool is like the beginning, which then indicates an end of some kind and the end of a certain type of obstacle, the end of certain type of problems, and then the beginning of new kinds of problems and the beginning of new lessons and new successes and new amazing things too. It's all new, but you know, it's just, it's just new in general. And so knowing that you're kind of at the bottom of a new mountain range, right? Cause we got the mountains in the back. So you're kind of at the bottom of new mountain range, uh, a new mountain range. And it's just a matter of putting one step in front of the other and just starting to climb. That's all it is. Okay. But it does require character. It requires, again, that promise to yourself. Okay. But remember the nine of coins, I said the beginning was a sign of your success. So I'm not worried about you failing and I'm not worried about you not showing up in the way that you need to show up. Okay. Patience here too with yourself. Patience with yourself because you may want things to move very quickly and you may get down on yourself a little bit when these things kind of start to suck you back a little bit. But have patience, have that forgiveness, have compassion, go for a walk, disconnect, go be out in nature, turn off your phone, turn off all the noise, and just have that moment to believe in yourself. Okay? 
All right, let's pull out the clarifiers. So the cards we're about to pull out, we're going to cover in the comprehensive reading. We're going to talk for another 25 to 30 minutes or so about all these cards. So we're going to get a lot deeper, a lot more detailed with all of these things. Um, probably get a little bit more information, other people, that kind of thing. So if you want to join again, all the info in the description box and the pinned comment thread down below. So I'd love to have you join. Let's go ahead and take a look at the devil card. What else does Capricorn need to know for May, uh, June, I'm sorry. <laughs> June 2024. Queen of Swords. Ace of Cups. Yeah, I really wasn't getting a bad feeling from that Devil card. And we got the Lovers. Really not a bad feeling. Okay, Six of Swords. Beautiful. King of Coins. Nine of Swords. Five of Swords. Oh, got a hair in my face or something. Five of Cups. A little intense for the Nine of Coins. Six of Wands. Four of Coins. Queen of Cups. Page of Wands. The Tower. Loving the tower. Sometimes these dramatic cards can be like the best things ever. The fool, fool on top of fool. So we got two fools. I'm going to pull one more card just because we got a repeat. A knight of cups. Okay. The moon. Or I'm sorry. <laughs> on top of the moon, we have the seven of wands. Uh, Queen of Coins, that's the Capricorn card. Five of Wands, okay, that's the Patience stuff. Knight of Swords, beautiful. Three of Coins. We are getting a few other people involved here. Uh, Ten of Wands, the Emperor. Seven of Coins, and another Moon card. Okay, so this is where we're going to pick up. So again, if you want to join, all the info in the description box in the pinned comment thread down below. Thank you so much, Capricorn. Have an amazing June, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.